the circumstances of the world around us might change. That means the way we apply scripture to our life might change. But God's nature does not change. So his standards of right and wrong are unchanging because they're part of his nature. He is a God of justice. And justice is in his nature. Okay, so I'm going to bring this to a practical place and talk about some of the issues facing you in society. First, let's talk about the death penalty. God created the death penalty because God values life. This is relevant, especially because recently, as we've talked about abortion, people will point fingers and say, Oh, you Christians, so contradictory. You say you're pro-life, but then are you for the death penalty? Boom, gotcha, burn. (laughs) It's not contradictory. It's moral consistency. In Genesis 9, we see God creating the death penalty. Here's what he says. And I will require the blood of anyone who takes another person's life. If a wild animal kills a person, it must die. And anyone who murders a fellow human must die. If anyone takes a human life, that person's life will also be taken by human hands. For God made human beings in his own image. Now be fruitful and multiply and repopulate the earth. Okay, so I want to point a couple things out. If you're familiar with scripture, you'll get more of this maybe. But first, God said this before the nation of Israel was even created. So this wasn't just like a law for the people of Israel. This was reflective of God's heart towards the value of life and the consequences of bloodshed. Also, God said this before the the law of Moses was given. So again, happened before even the law of Moses came to be. Also, God, when he talks about the value of life and the consequences, he refers back to creation. For a a man was made in God's image. And anytime you read something in scripture where they refer back to creation, that's usually a clue. That's what's being discussed there is a universal enduring principle. Okay? When you refer back to creation, it's kind of like Jesus did this when he was talking about marriage and sexuality, and he said this, have you not read that from the beginning God created them male and female? For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. Have you not read that from the beginning, referring back to creation? Don't you guys remember the original design? That's a clue right there for you as Bible scholars. By the way, Jesus right there, he just ruled out transgenderism, homosexuality, and gender theory. Some people will try to say, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. He didn't have to. You know why? He didn't have to go through and list all the depraved ways that man might sin sexually. Because what he actually did was he laid out and made it very clear God's plan for sexuality. Have you not read that from the beginning God made them male and female? Not male and or female on a sliding spectrum. And he said, a man will leave his father and mother, not his father and father, or his mother and mother, or his father and mother and some other crazy combination, (laughs) and will be united to his wife, right? Jesus made it very clear, God's design, so he doesn't need to go through and say, and you can't do this, and you can't do that, and you can't do this, and you can't do that. An argument from silence is not a valid argument. So in Genesis 9, God says, human life is precious because all men are made in God's image. All mankind, that includes the ladies, is made in God's image. And life is so precious to God that if you take a human life unjustly, you forfeit your own right to life. That's a fitting penalty in God's eyes. And it's a deterrent to moral depravity. Okay, there's a movie that came out a little while ago called The Purge. This is not me endorsing the movie. It's like a dark, weird movie, but I think the plot is interesting. In the movie called The Purge, some of you already know what it's about. I'm not judging you tonight. Okay. In the movie, the plot is for one day, it's legal to murder. And so all these people, what do they do? They go buck wild murdering each other. And I think it's funny because it's maybe one of the most realistic movies that's ever been made. (laughs) 
We live in a world where people walk around like, oh, I'm just a good person. I just know I am because I rescue puppies from shelters. And I know I do wrong, but I think I do more, more good than, than bad. It's like, yo, if you could get away with it, you would do a lot of bad. If you could get away with it, you'd be out murdering in the streets. I mean, a lot of us, we're Christians and we'd be thinking about it. No, no, I'm not supposed to do that. No. But one of the reasons why God made such a serious punishment for murder is because he knows that that deters us from doing wrong. You know, if you're, if you're afraid of the consequences, you're less likely to do wrong. In Romans 13, 4, it says, For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They're God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Okay, so we do know that obviously sometimes government gets it wrong or they do wrong. But in general, God establishes authority and governing authorities for the good of mankind, despite the flaws. Because the fear of consequences and the rule of law, government carries the sword. They are agents of God's wrath to bring punishment to evildoers. And that restrains people from doing wrong. And, and this passage is basically saying, you know, if, if you don't do wrong, you generally have a lot less to fear from the government. And so Christians should support the death penalty because God does. We want it to be applied properly. We want people to be convicted properly and justly. And we don't see anyone get unjustly convicted. But if you value human life, then you should be pro-life when it comes to innocent babies and pro-death when it comes to convicted murderers. Okay, I'm moving on with this very politically incorrect sermon. 